people very often use alleged figures for the numbers of Christians or the number of religious people in the country as justification for imposing religiously inspired policies on us, for example, over abortion, over gay people's rights, over um, the rights of religious interests to be exempt from the law, that kind of thing. And time and again, since the 2001 census, we've heard people saying, oh, but 72% of the British people are Christian and you can't gainsay them. We in the Richard Dawkins Foundation for Reason and Science in the UK branch were curious whether that 72% was really justified. And we joined in the campaign run by the British Humanist Association to have the religion question taken out of the 2011 census because we suspected that the figure, whatever it came out as, would be misused in the same way. We failed in that campaign. The religion question was put in the 2011 census. So our foundation fell back on plan B which was to commission an opinion poll taken immediately after the census, in the, in the week immediately following the census, to ask just those people who ticked the Christian box what they really believed and why they ticked the Christian box. And what we found was, firstly, that the figure of 72% looks as though it's dropped to about 54%, which is interesting, important in itself. But even the 54% who tick the Christian box are not really Christian, or many of them are not really Christian in any sense that you might recognize. Now, we've been attacked for saying that because people say, well, who are you to tell Christians what they, what they believe? And that's not the point at all. We are asking Christians what they believe. Uh, we're interested in, in what people who call themselves Christian really believe. The reason why we commissioned it in the first place is because politicians and other um, religious apologists have used the 72% to implement policy. And they cannot use the 54% now to implement religion positive policy because, because more than 50% of the population allegedly um, are Christian. Because the policies that they're implementing are not such as would be endorsed by the majority of those 54%. And we even ask them explicitly, what is your view on things like the privileging of religion and law? What is your view on gay rights and so on? And time and again, the, the general message that comes through is, no, these people may call themselves Christian, but they're not favoring Christian policies. And a particular example of that is when we ask them, why do you consider yourself Christian? What does it mean to you to be Christian? In other words, why did you tick the Christian box? The dominant reason they gave was, well, I try to be a good person. Well, don't we all try to be a good person? And, and of course, you know, Muslims and Jews and, and Buddhists and Hindus and atheists try to be a good person. It's nothing to do with being Christian. But then the paradox was that when we asked the same sample, the, the what we call census Christians, when you have a moral question, when you have a question of right and wrong to solve, do you go to your religion? Do you turn to your holy book in order to decide what's right and wrong? Only 10% said yes. So on the one hand, they say, I call myself Christian because I try to be a good person. But on the other hand, when they're asked explicitly, where do you turn in trying to decide what would be good, what would be right in this moral situation? Only 10% turn to their religion. Thank you.